What's up everyone? My name is Soren Iverson and I'm a product designer at Cash App. Today, I'm going to show you how to design and prototype buttons as shown in Google's material design guidelines. Let's get started. If you're new to designing button components, I recommend getting started by looking at Google's material design guidelines. Here they outline things like usage, the anatomy, hierarchy and placement, and they even have an interactive demo. For the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that you have at least a basic understanding of button components. What we'll design today are a contained button, a contained button with an icon, an outlined button, and a text button. Though not shown, we'll also add a with icon option for both the outlined button and the text button. In terms of usage, buttons communicate actions that users can take. These are typically placed throughout the UI in places like dialogues, modal windows, forms, cards, and toolbars. To get started, I'm gonna type the word button. Let's make this SF Pro, but we're gonna switch this to semi-bold. I'm gonna bring in the letter space in a little bit. We're gonna have this be 14 pixels by 20 pixels line height. Once we've got all that, I'm gonna hit Shift A to apply auto layout. Let's reduce the space in between to zero. Let's change the horizontal padding to 16 pixels and the vertical padding to 8 pixels. Can't see this, so let's go ahead and take that primary color and make it our fill. And then I'm going to take that text that we're using and make it white. Now I'm going to add 8 pixels of corner rounding here, and I'm going to name this default. I'm going to set this to fill container. This way when I go to expand the button, if I click here, it's taken up all this space rather than hugging the content so I can fit more text in this container. Now that I have the default button, create another instance of this. We'll call this hover. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this, go to effects, drop shadow, and I have the off Y offset be one and two, and then this will be 10 pixels. Now I'm going to do this again. All the wives would be two, blur be four, be eight pixels. Now we'll do four, eight, six percent. Now we'll do eight, sixteen, four percent. And finally, sixteen, thirty-two, two percent. And you'll notice what I did there. I just multiplied each of these values by two until I got to sixteen by thirty-two. And I reduced the opacity by two percent on each of these shadows as they were getting farther away from the box. Now that I have the hover state, I'm also going to create my disabled state. So let's remove all these shadows. And I am going to take the primary and I'm going to make Make it a light gray like this. And I'm going to take that white text and I'm going to make that a darker gray. Now let's call this disabled and let's call this hover. Now we'll take our hover. We're gonna make the focused state. Let's say someone that's using their keyboard to navigate through the screen, they'll get to that button by potentially hitting tab and it indicates that you're not hovered over that, but that's the item that's currently active to be selected. So if I go to stroke, go to outside, I'm gonna take this primary color that we have here and I am going to increase the brightness of this by about 14 or 15. And then I'm gonna add the stroke a little bit thicker Let's also make this a little bit lighter. This will be called focused. And then we'll have the pressed state. Pressed state is when someone actually clicks on the object. So let's bump up all of these by 2%. And then we'll rename this pressed. Then I'm going to distribute this vertical spacing evenly. And now I'm going to duplicate this element over 20 pixels. And I'm going to add our icon. I'm going to type the word plus here. And I'm going to change this to font awesome pro, which is an icon based font. I'm going to set the width here to 20 by 20. If you don't have font awesome, you could also just use vector icons here. But I like using font awesome. Make sure this icon isn't too wide. I'm going to change the width to be 12 pixels. I'm going to cut that, paste it in here, move it to be before the text. I'm going to change this to be 8 pixels of spacing. I'm going to stretch this out a bit until the button text not wrap. I'm going to have this be hug contents for a second. And then I'm going to reduce the width until we have 16 pixels of spacing on either side. And then I'm going to reset this to be fill container, but keep this to be a fixed width. I am going to duplicate this. I'm going to copy and paste the styles from each of these buttons. On Mac, I'm going to hit Option Command C and then Option Command V, paste it styling. Let's call this hover. And then I'll add this here, like this eight pixel spacing. Add the plus here and add the plus here. And then we'll take these other two CTAs um, until they match. And now I've got this trailing icon button. So we wanted to change this to be a shopping cart. Do that. It's pretty flexible according to what ever you need. The spacing is a little tight on this, so let's actually change this to 16 pixels. And then I'm going to add four pixels here to each of these. And then I'm going to make sure that all of these are set to fill container, which they are. So we're good there. Now I've got our fill button as well as the fill button with a leading icon. Hit create component set. I'm going to call this button. So this first property was the state. I'm going to call that state. 
but then there is another property which is icon we'll call this default false create the property i'm going to select all of these and where it says icon i'm going to have it say true what that's doing is creating a true false value for whether or whether or not it has an icon associated with it and so if i take this component and bring it over here i can toggle this on and off once i have my primary buttons done i'm going to go ahead and create my secondary buttons so let's duplicate these first thing i'm going to do for this default state is i'm going to switch that fill to a stroke and then i'm going to change this to be that primary purple let's take this and do the same thing two pixel stroke change the text to be that primary purple we're also going to add a fill here and that fill is going to be a very 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 slight purple so we'll take this the lightness to let's say 96 so we'll take that and what we're going to do is we're actually going to add this fill to this button as well or we're going to reduce the opacity to one percent the reason we're doing that is later we're going to be doing some prototyping and if you don't have that you're going to get a glitchy animation now let's go to our disabled state shift x like the stroke two pixels and then that's our disabled state now let's do our focus state i'm actually going to copy everything from over here and then i'm going to copy everything from over here then i'm going to take this purple and i'm going to have it match that outline stroke we had with our designs and then we'll do the same thing with the text fill and then the other thing that we're going to do here we're going to increase the fill color a bit the last thing we'll do on this press state is we'll change that to be an inside stroke like we did here and then we'll grab these text layers and we'll make sure these colors match this button and then we're going to add a fill here and then we're going to take this fill and we're going to darken it a bit make the difference between these two a little bit more obvious and then i'm actually going to make this stroke and text color a little bit darker just to differentiate a bit for that pressed state i'm also going to darken the shadow a little bit make the text and outline color darker and then make this fill a little bit more intense now that i've got the secondary button all set up i'm going to go in here and create this third type of button which is just the text only and let's go ahead with this first one and we're going to remove the stroke we'll do the same thing for this the same thing for this the same thing for all of these actually and the other thing that we're going to do here is we're going to remove the drop shadows so i'm going to select all of these options that have drop shadows and we will remove those now we have all our buttons but i need to make sure they're named appropriately because right now some of them i can control them so if i go to button i've got state icon but then i I also need to add a new variant called type and so the types are going to be primary secondary and tertiary these are our primary these are our secondary and these are our tertiary buttons i'm going to hover over all these and i'm going to select this and i'm going to say secondary and then finally i'm going to select all these text only buttons and i'm going to call these tertiary i'm going to select all the buttons that don't have an icon and i'm going to say all. I select all the buttons that do have an icon and I'm going to say true and then I'm going to make sure the default buttons are default hover buttons are hover the disabled buttons are disabled focused buttons are focused and the pressed buttons are pressed now let's take this component let's go down here I've got my button say I can change it disabled focused hover or pressed I can easily toggle the icon on or off and then I can go between primary secondary and tertiary this becomes super powerful when you're working with a bunch of buttons simultaneously let's say I had a primary and a secondary button and I wanted both of these to be in their default state let's say I don't like the pixel rounding here i want to be more rounded i could go back to these components above and let's change this pixel rounding on all of them from 8 to 12 and then if i go in here those changes have been reflected now that we've got the designs of the buttons let's go ahead and prototype them for the sake of time i'm only going to animate one button style let's go ahead and do this button here i'm going to go to prototype i hover over and there's this plus icon i'm going to click and drag this to here and let's go to while hovering state is hover there is an icon the type is primary and i'm going to change this to say smart animate we'll have it easy in let's change this to 400 seconds on the hover state of this button i'm going to click drag this and say on click change to press icon primary and we'll smart animate that and i'm going to take this button here i'm going to say after delay and we'll change this to be essentially no delay one millisecond change to state icon primary smart animate using it and we're going to make this a really quick animation only 50 milliseconds let's take this i'm going to add this button here center it in my design i'm going to make this prototyping screen a new flow starting point and then i'm going to hit click play if i hover here you can see that shadow come up let's have this happen in 200 milliseconds and then i'm going to take this button put it in the center of my design and then when i go over here hover over you can see that purple change it's a little subtle on the design so what i can do is i can actually make this purple a little bit lighter here let's do that i'm going to shrink down the size of this just so it's easier to see and then if i go here hover you'll see that shadow shows up and i click and it changes to that purple to make this a little bit more clear let's take this after delay and change this to be 100 milliseconds just so you have some time to see it and then fresh hover click 
Now I've applied those animations to each of these button styles. I'm going to go ahead and copy each of these, and then I'm going to add them to my prototype. Let's make this a little bit bigger, like this. Now I've got all these buttons laid out here. If I go to my prototype, you can see I can easily go through the interactions for each of these buttons. And that's it. You now have a button set that you can easily change to be whatever state you need. You can also add an icon or remove an icon, and then you can change between primary, secondary, and tertiary button types. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now better understand button components, component sets within Figma, and how to easily create a component set that you can use and customize according to the needs of any given project that you might have. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.